Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church. And I'm so happy that you join us to our online program today. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back every Sabbath for new programs where we sing different songs, we have different activities, and we praise God together. And if you are a regular, we want to welcome you back. It's always good to have you guys here worshiping God together. Now, for the past couple of weeks on our online program, we've been doing something different every time. Last week, for example, we invited the kids to send us an email with their name, address, and we were going to send kid out to visit them at a social distance visit, right? We would drive by and kid would wave to them, to those kids. And I, I'm happy to tell you that I drove kid to six houses last week. We visited kids in Glendale, La, Cros La Crescenta, La Cunada, Flint Ridge, Tahanga, and we went all the way to Burbank. And the kids were so happy to see kid, and I was happy to see kids' faces as they saw kid coming by and say hello from a distance. We even had a family that wrote a card of Happy Sabbath to kid. Oh, that was so exciting. Thank you so much for all the parents who took the time to send us that email with a message. If you want kid to come by your house and say hello, have mom and dad or dad send us an email. It is VD, stands for Vallejo Drive, kidsconnection at gmail.com. VD, kidsconnection at gmail.com. Send us an email with your name, your address, and I'll make sure that kid comes by to see you, uh, unless if you like Frederico and and uh, Francisco that are in Mexico now, that is kind of hard. But we will do our best to have kid come by and see you from a distance and say hello. Now, speaking of kid coming by to say hello, we received a note from someone. Do you guys remember Andrea? She had fun singing and participating in our Kids Connection program. Well, uh, Freddie and her mom, Karen, sent us an email this week. And here's what they said about Andrea. Hi, everyone. We are Freddie and Karen, uh, Andrea's mom. So far, during this time, we are doing good. It is hard for us, but it's much harder for Andrea. I can imagine that. Now, when Andrea saw Kid coming by, by the, the kids' houses last week, she was so happy because she misses Kid. She also misses all the kids at Kids Connection, all her friends. When we asked her if she wants to have Kid come over and say hello to her, she said, yes, please. So I'd like to say, Andrea, get ready. Kid is coming to visit you this afternoon. I'm gonna text your dad and I'm gonna drive Kid to your house and whenever we're five minutes away, we're gonna let you know Kid is coming so you can come outside and see Kid and we're gonna wave hello from you for you from the street. And uh, mom and dad uh, finished the, uh, the message saying, we will be more than happy to see Kid. Happy Sabbath, stay home and say, God bless you all. Thank you so much, mom and dad, for writing the note for Andrea. And we are looking forward to see Andrea this afternoon. I also want to give a shout out to um, uh, Joshua, Joy, and Jael. They are in Northern California, but their parents sent us a, a, an, a picture, an image, a photo of them watching our program all the way in Sacramento. And here is a picture of Joshua, Joy, and Jael as they were watching our program, Kids Connection. Hello to the three of you. We miss you guys and we hope you're doing okay. We also have a picture that uh, Francisco and Frederico, mom sent it to us. They are in Mexico and here they are watching our program all the way in Mexico. We are so happy that we our program is reaching all the way to Mexico and kids all over the place are watching our program. If you want to send us your picture of you watching the program or participating on our program, 
send us an email with that picture and we'll be happy to share that with your friends and your note as well thank you so much i am sure that you guys are having um uh, some fun at home and having school at home and i hope that you guys are doing okay most of all we're all staying safe and i'm so happy that we keep coming back and watching this program every week now let's get our kids connection program started and what better than sing our song of the day so i invite you guys to stand up let's sing our song of the day that has to do with our program today welcome to kids connection Thank you for singing the song with us. Now let's bow our heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you for another Sabbath. Thank you for the opportunity that you give each one of us to worship together on our online program. We pray that your Holy Spirit be with us and may we listen and learn more about you each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Now. Let me ask you something. Are you afraid of any animals? Are you afraid of any birds? What is the animal that you fear the most? Do you fear the lion? Do you fear the tiger? Do you fear a chicken? What? A chicken? Do you fear a rooster? What? I don't fear chickens or rooster. How about a turkey? Do you fear a turkey? Look, 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 look. Remember? You know what a turkey is, right? Well, on today's mission story, we're going to hear a story about this girl that she used to be so much afraid of turkeys. But there's a twist to the story. Let's watch a story of a girl who was afraid of turkeys and see what happened. Little Agnieszka grew up in beautiful countryside in southern Poland. A big green forest stood on one side of her house. A green meadow with pretty white daisies and pink and purple wildflowers stretched out on the other side of the house. Agnieszka loved nature, but she was easily frightened. She didn't like the dark. Strangers were scary. Her family had cats, dogs, and chickens, but she was scared of them. She was especially terrified of mooing cows and gobbly gobbling turkeys. Fortunately, no cows or turkeys lived at her house. 
but a flock of turkeys did live in the yard of a farmhouse that she passed on the way to school. Agnieszka loved school, and she loved walking to school. One morning, she skipped along the road to the village and turned the corner to school. A few steps later, she saw something that filled her with horror. She stopped in her tracks. Dozens of gobbly gobbling turkeys were wandering on the road. The birds were enormous, and they made a loud, scary racket. <laughs> Agnieszka looked to one side of the road, a rushing stream. She couldn't walk through it. She looked to the other side. More gobbly gobbling turkeys were walking in a ditch and strolling in the adjacent meadow. She couldn't walk there. She looked beyond the meadow. The gate to the farmhouse fence was open and the yard was empty. The turkeys had escaped from there. Agnieszka was trapped. She couldn't go to school because of the gobbly gobbling turkeys. She couldn't go home because then she would be late for school. She sat down on the road to hide from the turkeys. God, help me, she prayed. Opening her eyes, she saw an elderly man riding a bicycle toward her. The man wore dark gray clothes and a dark gray cap. His bicycle was dark gray. He was coming from the direction of the school. Fearlessly entering the flock of gobbly gobbling turkeys, he energetically waved his arms and shouted, Shoo! Shoo! The turkeys gobbled even more and made a frantic dash toward their yard. Feathers flew and the screech of the gobbly gobbling turkeys was deafening. <laughs> Agnieszka was surprised that the stranger wasn't scared of the turkeys. She had never seen him before, but she wasn't afraid. He looked sort of familiar. As the old man rode past her, he said kindly, It's all right now. Agnieszka's mouth dropped open in amazement. She looked at the turkeys gobbly gobbling back in their yard. She looked back at the road to wave at the old man. He had disappeared. Agnieszka happily ran to school. She wasn't even late. The turkeys never invaded the road again. Agnieszka has always remembered God's answer to her frightened prayer. Now the mother of two children, she tells them how the stranger scared away the turkeys. I don't know whether he was an ordinary man or an angel, she says, but I know the victory came from God. I was able to survive the turkeys with God's help. Wasn't that incredible how that man was able to help her? Now, she doesn't know if he was just a man or an angel that came to help her. But I know one thing for sure. God sent that man to help her. The same way that man came to help her, other missionaries in other places of the world are helping people to get to know Jesus. And our offering is going to help them to continue to share that love of God to other people. Now, if you haven't done it yet, click on the link above here and ask mom and dad to donate to the missionaries. Thank you so much for your offering. Now let me ask you something. What is your favorite thing in the world? What is it? Do you like <gasps> ice cream? Mm, how about Disneyland? Do you like grandparents? Do you like cotton candy, popcorn, swimming in the pool with friends, riding a bike, riding a scooter, jumping in the puddle, going to the beach, playing video games with your friends, playing board games with your friends? Do you like birthday parties? Do you like your friends? Do you like school? Do you like flying a kite? How about birds? Do you like going to the playground or climbing a tree? Do you like fruits or a road trip? How about camping? I bet you like presents. How about Christmas? Or maybe you like fire truck. Of all these things, which one is the one that you like the most? Or do you like something that I haven't listed? We all have our favorite things, right? And if you had one minute, one minute to do whatever you wanted to do right now, 
what would that one thing be? What would you choose? What would be your favorite thing to do for one minute if you only had one minute? Or if you could choose anything in the world to do for one minute, what would you choose? Ha! Would you choose to um, eat something really good? Or to do one of the things that I listed? Or something else that I have listed? Now, one minute seems very short, right? Well, let's think about it. Uh, let's see what a minute looks like. Here, well, a minute is 60 seconds. So, here's a minute. Here's 60 seconds, or not 60 seconds, but here is an example. One. That was only 10 seconds. We still have to do this times six so we can get to a minute, which is 60 seconds. Now, 60 seconds could be a long time if you are racing a car. 60 seconds may not be a long time if you are going to school and you're getting to school. It's only a minute. But what would you choose to do what is the your favorite thing to do for one minute how long does it take you to brush your teeth in the morning how long does it take you to get dressed in the morning it takes a lot longer than 60 seconds which is one minute well let me ask you something how about jesus would you like to spend 60 seconds with Jesus? Was Jesus on your list? Did you think about Jesus when I asked you what was your favorite thing to do? On today's story in your classroom, we're going to learn of this man that could not just spend one minute with God. He had to spend more than a minute and not only once a day several times a day and I want you guys to pay attention to what is what was important to him he didn't have ice cream back then or cotton candy there was no fire trucks but he there were other things but he chose to spend a lot of time with God. We're going to listen to the story after we sing our song of the day. And I hope that you guys remember of how he spent most of his time and why he did that. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and sing our song of the day again. And we are going to enjoy listening our story, singing together our song of the day. And then we're going to listen to our uh, teacher's classroom story right after this. Let's sing it together.
Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this program and thank you because you are our God. Thank you because you are keeping us safe and you are protecting us. We ask your blessings over all the boys and girls that are watching this program right now and the ones that are not watching. Be with them, protect them, keep them safe. Keep mom and dad safe, grandparents, and help us to get together again very soon to worship your name right here in Kids Connection. Help us to learn more about you now as we listen to the teacher with the Sabbath school lesson. And help us to learn how this man chose you as his number one, as his priority. Help us to choose God as our priority every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being a part of another Kids Connection program. It's always a pleasure, and I'm always happy that you guys join us every day. Don't forget, tomorrow we have Kid to Kid at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And parents, we don't have Parents Connection every Sabbath anymore. Parents Connection is going to happen on the second Sabbath of the month at 2.30 in, on the afternoon. So Parents Connection, 2.30 on the second Sabbath. Okay? And if you guys want kid to come by and see you, send me an email, send me a text message, have mom or dad contact me, give me your name and your address, and we will send, I will drive kid to your house and we will have kids say hello from a distance. We'll take a picture of kid, just like we did with the other kids last Sabbath, and just like we're gonna do with Andrea this afternoon. And uh, and I I'm so happy and I'm so excited that we got to see some of the kids from a distance last week. I can't wait to see you guys and to uh, spend some, some time from a distance saying hello to mom and dad and, and you too. Thank you so much. We love you, we miss you. Stay tuned and listen to the story of your lesson today. Until next Sabbath, God bless you. Bye-bye. Hi, kids. Welcome to our classroom this morning. I know that you're still missing us, and I still miss you. But soon we're going to be able to be together. Everyone is going to be singing and praising and dancing in God's house very soon. But for now, I'm glad that I'm joining you through a video this Sabbath morning. Isn't it wonderful that we can still connect with each other? Hi, everyone. Can you wave at me? Hi. I know that you're there and thank you for watching this morning. I'm glad each one of you is here. So let's bow our heads so we can start our lesson. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful and we are happy that you are always taking care of us. Thank you because you love us so much and you can't wait to spend eternity with us. Thank you and we will be together soon. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Isn't it wonderful that we had one more week I know that some of you want to be over with school and that is coming soon. Some of you only have two weeks left, some of you probably three, but soon we're gonna be out of school and that's gonna be fun. It's gonna be great because it's gonna be a different summer. We're gonna have to find new ways on having fun this summer. And that is just the way of learning. So it's gonna bring a new opportunity for us to learn something new. And remember my prayer? I said something about seeing God soon. How many of you would like to go to heaven soon? I can't wait to be there. And you know, now I'm trying to remember every time I pray and say, God, I can't wait a moment to be with you again. Because I know that that's what God wants. God wants to be with us all the time. 
I want to thank in this morning teacher Kelly because she got she was with you guys last week. So thank you, teacher Kelly. Thank you for helping us out. And now I'm back. Last time we had studied about Daniel and some of his friends. Thank you very much because someone replied to the message and sent us what the names, what the original names of Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was. So thank you very much for that. I hope more of you send me a message and we'll sure give you something next time. We'll do a little giveaway in a, some other time. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they also had a friend and their friend was, who can tell me what their friend was? Daniel, yes, that was the other name that we were missing. You know, the story of Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego does not tell us about Daniel. We're not sure why, but it doesn't name Daniel. Probably Daniel was in another province or doing something else at that time. We don't know. But you know what? I'm gonna ask you something this morning. Can you go and get ready, okay? Because this is gonna be something that you Without thinking, you're going to have to go and do it. I want you to grab three things that you would grab if you were in a hurry right now. Let's say that something is going on and your parents tell you, grab three things only because we have to go. What would those three things be? Go, hurry up, find them up. Ready? Three things only. Okay, so my first pick, and you can share your uh, pick with your parent uh, or your sister or sibling. Um, my first pick was my phone. Oh no, why my phone? I've had ter terrible days that sometimes I forget my, my phone at home and oh boy, that is just a chaos because I can't communicate with others, I can't receive messages. So for me, it's very important to have a phone with me. I know sometimes we don't need the phone too much, but I've got used to the phone so much that I can't live without my phone. My second thing that I grabbed was food. Oh, I love packing up snacks because sometimes I get hungry. So what if I don't have somewhere to eat or something? So I'll pack a snack. That was my number two. Now my number three, do you want to know what my number three, three was? Hmm, what was my number three? my passport because you know what if something happens i want to have an id an official id so i don't want to be without a passport so for me those are like three very important things that i would quickly grab what are your things share them with me next time okay so but wait a minute in my three favorite things did i include it god well, I could say that my phone has a Bible, but was I thinking in God when I grabbed my phone? Huh. How often do we forget to pack God in our bags? Uh, yes. I think sometimes we live in such a rush. Quickly, quickly, grab your stuff. Let's go to school. Brush your teeth. Grab your backpack and we forget to put God in our backpack. We forget to put God in our mind. We forget to put God while we're eating. Um, that's a tough one. I know, it is for me. But you know what? God wants you and me to be his number one. God always has you in, your, in his mind. God is always thinking about you and thinking in ways he can communicate with you all the time. Have you ever been away for a long time? Probably you're still little, but sometimes you're away for a long time and you can't wait to see mom and dad to tell them something that happened. Probably you were at school and you're like, I really wanna get home because I can't wait to tell this to my mom. I can't wait to tell grandma about my good grades. I can't wait to see my friends so they can see my new tooth coming out. 
sometimes we have things that we just can't hold and we just want to tell someone about it. Well, guess what? God has always the thought about talking to you and to me. Yes. And sometimes we do not include God. Sometimes we wake up and we forget to give thanks to God because we're breathing one more day of life. And Daniel had a way of communicating God that no matter where he was, remember, Daniel was taken as a captive. He was a war prisoner, basically. He was taken by the force and he was removed from his parents' house. So I'm pretty sure he had to grab one thing and just take that one thing with him. The Bible doesn't say anything about that, but I'm sure that he just grabbed something and left with whatever he had in his hand. But you know what? Daniel decided that what the one thing he was going to take with him was going to be God in his heart. No matter where he was, no matter what he, he would do, he always remembered that he wanted to have God in his mind. And I want to share something with you this morning. Can you look at your Bibles? Deuteronomy. So we have Genesis, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. You're thinking, oh, the teacher forgot her her Bible books. I didn't, but I learned them in Spanish. And sometimes it takes a while for me to translate the, the, the books of the Bible to English. So, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Number, and Deuteronomy. So, we're going to look at the book of Deuteronomy. And we're going to look uh, book number 8, chapter number 8. And it's going to be verse 10. Can you all look it up? Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 10. And it says, You will have all you want to eat, and you will give thanks to the Lord for God for the fertile land that he has given you. Make certain that you do not forget the Lord your God. Do not fail to obey any of his laws that I am giving you today. When you have all you want to eat and had built good houses to live in, and when your cattle and sheep, your silver and gold, and all your other possessions have increased, be sure that you do not become proud and forget the Lord your God who rescued you from Egypt where you were slaves. God is telling us, all your life I have been with you. Every moment I will always be with you. Don't forget about me. Don't forget about me for I am always with you. And you know, Daniel knew in his heart that God was always going to be with him. Daniel knew that God was following along his life all along. And he wanted God to be in his heart. He made a choice to be with God. What do you think makes you strong? Hmm, you could say probably... I don't know, eating broccoli, eating spinach. My favorite food, do you know what it is? I'm going to share with you. I can't share with you in person or else I would, but I love almonds. You know, almonds have a lot of nutrients. And in my opinion, I think almonds make you strong. So I love almonds. What is your favorite thing? Or what do you think makes you stronger? Probably it's not food, it's something else. What do you think makes you stronger? Well, anything that we think that makes us stronger, it's because we trust that that thing is going to provide 
something in our lives. And you know what? All the things that we can pick to make us stronger or that we have, we can even have added that another layer and we can put the layer of God. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful to know that no matter what happens, no matter where we are, we can stay with Daniel. We can be as Daniel, that he decided in his heart that no matter where he was, he was going to remain on God's side. And he was going to be praying to the God that he knew was real and that he was going to always obey his laws. You know, I invite you this week to read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 10 to 14. And remember that, that God is by your side and he will always be. I hope you had a great time this morning. I'm happy that you stopped by and I'm glad to see you. I hope to see you next week. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing some cra origami craft, so get ready some paper so we can work together next week. Okay, so you have one little homework to do. Get origami paper so we can work next week. Have a great day. I hope you had fun today. Let's have a word of prayer so we can go. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you because you're always with us. And because we want to decide this morning to be with you, help us so that you are our priority. And the first thing we do every day is to give you praise and give you thanks for the wonderful life you give us. Thank you, God, and I can't wait to see you soon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye, kids.